am the finisher of our faith. We salute you. We praise you. We worship you. We honor you. You are great and greatly to be praised. Somebody shout glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. I am telling you. How many of y'all feel his presence in this place? I am. Listen. I am telling you. Man, that worship was extraordinary this morning. The Bible says that God inhabits. He sits in. He rests in. He abides in the presence of our praise. Father, we thank you for your weight this morning, your kebab this morning, your splendor, your majesty resting upon us. I'm so grateful to be in the house of God where the presence of God is. I'm so grateful to be connected to Greater Works Ministries. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to worship you with family. Thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence without any entertainment, without any mixed emotions, without any agendas. All we want is you. All we need is you. Lord, have your way in this place. We surrender to your will. We surrender to your ways. We surrender to your spirit. Let's sing this one more time together. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want Come on, let's sing that together. You. You. To worship you. You. That's what we're here to do. Just to worship you. <laughs> Oh, just to worship you. We need more of your spirit, oh God. You know, some of the most precious times that I've had with the Lord has been at home. And I want to encourage you, if you're not a worshiper, to become a worshiper. Because in the midst of you raising your hands to your father on the side of your bed and just telling him, there's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord, all I want is to worship you. While you're by yourself, you. I don't need anybody else. You. You. You alone are my strength. Somebody sing you. You. You alone are my source. Somebody sing you. You. You alone are my comforter. Somebody sing you. You. You alone are my breakthrough. Somebody sing you. You. Let's take it up because you are God and we worship you. You are God and 
to get to know him for yourself. Hallelujah. Jeremiah blessed me so much today. Yeah. Because Jeremiah is the product of a mother that wouldn't give up. He's the product of a mother that said, I'm going to stay in church no matter what this world dishes out my way. So because his mother remained faithful, he had the opportunity to express what was in him but was hidden because he didn't get the opportunity. Come on now, come on now. Come on. Look at somebody across the room and say, don't stand in my way. Don't stand in my way. Give me my opportunity. Somebody say, give me my opportunity. I, I need all I need, Jasmine. All I need is my opportunity. Elder Hicks, give me my don't don't take my opportunity. You never know when my moment might come. You never know. Somebody say, give me my opportunity. We have to give our kids the opportunity to worship because it doesn't matter how good of a parent you are there's going to come a day when you're not going to be able to help your son or daughter but if you gave them the opportunity to see you worship if you gave them the opportunity to, to, to submit to a local assembly. If you gave them the opportunity to see other men worshiping God, to see other men crying out to God, and they see this is okay, then they will have the opportunity to be free, to be at liberty. Somebody say, I want my opportunity. Listen, don't leave church before your opportunity comes. Don't leave your marriage before your opportunity comes. Don't give up on your children before their opportunities come. Yes. Yes, God. Somebody say, don't give up on me. Don't give up on me. I know I made a lot of mistakes. I know today that I'm, I'm still not perfect. I, I know that I don't always do the right thing, but, but don't give up on me before my opportunity comes because my opportunity is going to show the world what's really in me my opportunity is going to show me what's really in me my opportunity is going to show my family i know i took you through hell but as i was taking you through hell hell was getting out of my life so that the heavens so that the heavens so that the heavens because you are god and we worship you you are God, and we worship you. You are for me, God, and we worship you. You are God, and we worship you. Look across the room. Say, don't give up on me, church family. Don't give up on me. Don't. You. Don't give up on me. I don't always say the right things. I, I don't always. But don't give up on me. Don't give up on me. Don't give up on me. I feel that in my spirit. Don't, don't give up on me. Some of you need to talk to your bodies. Don't give up on me. I, I still got work to do, body. Don't, don't give up on me. Legs, legs. Don't give up on me. Lord, don't, don't give up. Mind. Don't give up. Hey, hey, hey. Don't give up. Heart, heart. Don't give up on me. Because you are God. And we worship you. You are God. Yeah. 
every one of you is God is saying the same thing to you. Don't give up on me. I, I know all the prayers that you have prayed to me have not been answered, Elder Life, but don't give up on me. Deacon Ray, I know you have cried out to me, and sometimes you don't know which way to turn, but, but don't give up on me. Minister Donald, I know there's a lot of things going on in your life, but God is saying, don't give up on me. Elder Hicks, I know you've been looking for the house. Yeah. I know you want the best for your children. Yeah. I know you want things to change, but God is saying, don't give up on me. Because you are and we you are God. Hey, when we worship you, you are God. And we worship you, are God. When we worship you. Hold on one second. Uh, mother, come up here. Kristen, let my mother see your mic. You. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on up here. Be careful. Sing that with me. There's nothing like the presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I want is to be with you. Yeah. Nothing like. Your presence, Lord, all I want is to be with you. Nothing like your presence, Lord, all I want is to be with you. Nothing like your presence, Lord, all I want is to be with you. Yes. You. My mother gave me the opportunity. You, all I want to you. Sing this with me, mother. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. Nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. Nothing like. Your presence, Lord, all I want is to worship you. Yes. Nothing like your presence, Lord, all I want is to worship you. All I want you. All I need you. You. Somebody shout hallelujah. My mother gave me an opportunity. <laughs> me, Donald, and a few of our boys, we were doing whatever we wanted to do out there. But at Sunday, at 10 o'clock, guess what we had to be every Sunday? We had to be in the church. Parents, can I encourage you? Bring your children into the house of God. Don't let them decide when they feel like coming. The Bible says, train up your child in the way they should go, and later they will not depart. You know what's amazing about my story is that my life wasn't changed in the church. But it was changed because I had a mother that took me to church. Because she took me to church, when God came to me, I knew who he was, not because I was saved, but because I had a mother that recognized how important it is for me to know something about the Lord. Come on, let's just thank God for our mothers. Yes, Father, we thank you for our mothers and our fathers 
that made sure we were in church whether we wanted to go or did. Father, we thank you for them. We pray that the same grace that you have placed over our life come upon their life, the same favor come upon their life. We pray that you would take them places they have never dreamed because of what you have allowed them to do in our life. Somebody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Well, you know, we, I can't minister to you too long. I'm going to ask Dennis to give me the, let's stand to our feet all over this place. How many of y'all enjoyed the worship? Some of y'all think, come on, come on, let's get a Lord a round of applause. How many of y'all enjoyed the worship? Amen. Some of y'all think that sometimes in worship, y'all are like, man, y'all are going a little overboard. But what God does a lot of times in worship is he wants it to be contagious for you. He, he wants you to be in church and the worship goes on until a point when you're driving down the street and you weren't a worshiper. And the next thing you know is you're singing, you are good. <laughs> And you're like, wait a minute, where did that come from? Oh, no, 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 no. You driving, you were the worshiper. Next thing you know, you turn in the corner with your, your hands up. You are, you are good. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't realize, but the church is your training ground. It's a place where you should learn how to worship, where you should learn how to pray. Where you should learn how to wait on your father. Where you should learn how to get along with people. Where you should learn how to walk in love. To be offended, the best place to be offended is right here in the church. Right? Because it gives you the opportunity to tell your brother you did me wrong or your sister you did me wrong. And not a gun to be pulled on you. Am I right, Elder Pam? It's the best place. You know, Elder Hicks, he had to go. But, but you know, the only thing that can happen to you in the church is a couple fist fights. That's about it. You ain't got to worry. I ain't never heard nobody got offended and got killed in the church. You know, that's a long shot. Somebody just say, this is my place to learn. This is to learn. Lord, if I'm offended, let me not leave because of my offense, but let me learn. And I just want to encourage you, everybody that, that is in the church is not saved. Can somebody say amen today? Y'all need to hear that. Because some people offend you on assignment from the devil to offend you so you can get out of your place. Are y'all hearing me today? So, so when you leave, you didn't do God's will, you did the devil's will. The devil put somebody on assignment to get you out of the church and you obeyed the devil. Somebody say shame on you, shame on you. Somebody say, it's okay to return. We still, we still go embrace you. We still go love on you. Right? Amen. Hey let's say our confessors this morning. Somebody confess with me. I am here today. I am here today. Come on, I want to hear some of my men. I am here today. I am here today. To be trained. To be trained. To dominate. To dominate. In every area of my life. In every area of my life. I am here. I am here. I am here. To be equipped. To be equipped. To be equipped. To be equipped to fulfill, to fulfill my God-given assignment. God God assignment. I am here. I am here to be empowered, to be empowered to advance the kingdom of God. To advance the kingdom. I command my ears, I command my ears, my eyes, my eyes, and my heart, and my, and my heart. Be open, to be open to hear, to hear, and do, and do God's living word, God's living word today, today, today in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Come on, with my women that let's confess. I am, I am a child of God. Child of God. I, am I am anointed. Anointed. I am, I am a soul winner. A soul winner. I am, I am full of faith. Full of faith. I am, I am as bold as a lion. As bold as a lion. I am accepted in the beloved. Accepted in the beloved. I am. Full of joy. Full of joy. Tell, tell somebody, watch out. Watch out. I am, I am. Full, of power. full of power in Jesus' name. You may be seated in heavenly places. Amen. How many of y'all excited to be in the house of God? Man, God is awesome, isn't he? He's so awesome. He's so awesome. He's so awesome. For many of you that were here Thursday, we started a new series called God's Agenda. Are you in or are you out? And I want to encourage you, if you have not got this book, listen, get it. What we're going to do, for those of you who are here, we want to be a blessing. 
If you give any offering today over $10, we're going to bless you with this book before you leave. I got Minister Joanna's already coming to uh, Jawan, her son, today. But I'm telling you, when you begin to read this book, you're going to begin to see God's heart and what, what God is saying to us in these last days, what's about to take place. Some things are already taking place, but I want you to be encouraged. As you read through this book, you're going to recognize that what we're pouring out in the sermons are not exactly the same thing that's in the book. That's why I encourage you to read it. But you're going to begin to see the essence of the book throughout the ministry as we begin to talk about these different chapters so that we can go higher in God. How many of y'all believe that God is up to something? I'm here to tell you today that we are on the verge of one of the greatest outpourings of God's spirit that the world has ever seen. What we have read in the Bible, listen to me, is going to pale in many of ways in comparison to what God is doing next. Whenever God moves, he always supersedes what he did last. And it's up to us to recognize that God is allowing us to be alive during a time where we're going to see billions and billions of people run into the house of God to say, what must I do to be saved? And it's up to us to show them not our version of the old man. Listen to me. It's up to us to show those individuals that God is bringing into the church. Somebody say the new version of us. Somebody say, I don't know if you knew it or not, but I got a new version. Somebody say, I touched the phone and it upgraded me. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm upgraded. I'm upgraded. I might have used to cuss you out, but I'm upgraded. Somebody say, I might have used to lie, but I'm up. I might have used to fornicate, but somebody say, I'm upgraded. We can't allow those who are coming into the church to see us as hypocrites, to see us as individuals that say one thing in the church. But Monday through Saturday, we're doing something different at home. We must be a people that show those who are coming in the example that Paul and all the other apostles showed us. Somebody say with me, in this season, I'm going to be intentional about showing the world the new version of me. I am a new creation. The world needs to see that I am a kingdom citizen, and I've been born again. That's what this is all about. All about us coming to a place where we recognize that the world has seen hypocrites for long enough. Now the world needs to see what the church really looks like, what the bride of Christ really looks like, what kingdom citizens really look like. So I'm going, go with me to chapter one. We're going to the awakening, and I'm I'm going to start off, we're going to be talking about this morning, the awakening, and I'm just going to share the prophetic word that God gave me. When you get the book today, you'll begin to read it, and for those of you who have the book, you'll be able to really gleam in. So during this portion, as I was, this was three years ago, God began to speak to me about each of these chapters, and what he told me three years ago, he said, my people are coming into a greater awareness of my spirit to be able to cooperate with me. There has been an imitation spirit in the church, a pretentious spirit, because my people, look at this, refuse to seek my face. The Lord told me my desire is to pour out my spirit and to see people, look at what he said, really healed, delivered, and set free. However, my people have not been able to sense me because they neglect me and my spirit. The Lord said, nevertheless, I am awakening my people to a sensitivity in me where they will not have to second guess themselves about whether or not I am telling them to do this or that. The Lord told me they will know for certain my will and my desire for them. Somebody just lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord, for a greater awakening coming into my heart. Thank you, Lord. I would no longer have to guess when you're speaking to me. Thank you, Lord. I would, I would know your heartbeat in this season. Thank you, Lord. I would, I would know the dreams are not pizza dreams. The dreams you're giving me are giving me direction. Somebody just say, thank you, Lord, for a new sensitivity to your spirit, a new awareness of your spirit that you're giving me in Jesus' mighty name. 
So, so as you read through God's agenda, the book, the first chapter, you are going to find a few things that the Lord put on my heart to share with you. I talk about in that chapter how the Lord said, my people refuse to seek my face. This is very important. I talked about how God began to share with me how it's time for consecration. I talked about how the Lord began to reveal to me to tell the church to start embracing prophets and apostles. I talked about in the book how God began to show me how the walls of denominations are about to fall. And I also talked about God's desire. And more than anything, this chapter, you're going to find that greater discernment is coming. Somebody say, greater discernment is coming. Now, what you need to know is that many people today in the church do not have a clue how important discernment is. Discernment gives you the ability to distinguish between good and evil. Discernment gives you the ability to distinguish between your voice, the devil's voice, and God's voice. Discernment gives you the ability to hear what God is saying and to see what God is doing. One of the main reasons God is not pleased with some of us as leaders today is because we lack Elder Hicks discernment. Somebody say with me again, greater discernment is coming. Somebody say with me, another outpouring of God's spirit is coming. So let's look at uh, how powerful discernment is. We, we all know the story when Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am. Let's go to Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 16th verse. These disciples had been with Jesus. They seen him do signs and wonders. They seen him do miracles. They had been with Jesus. They, they, they saw how he was diligent in prayer. And out of all 12 of them, there was only one that had an answer. And the Bible says, and Simon Peter, Peter answered and said, what did he say? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So right in that moment, right in that instance, Peter heard the voice of God. And right when Peter heard the voice, Jesus expressed his excitement, and he went further to, to reveal the power of discernment. Now, many people think that what Jesus was saying when he spoke to Peter, Elder Lightfoot, is that he was just talking to Peter. But when you really gleam and look into this scripture with greater insight, you would see that he was not just talking to Peter, but he was talking to any man or woman that had discernment, Minister Donald. Look at what he said in Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 17th and the 19th verse. And Jesus answered and said unto Peter, look at what he said, Blessed art thou, Simon Burjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. He was telling him, this didn't come from your own intellect. But he said, but my Father which is in heaven. And look at what Jesus told him. Because you have discernment, Peter, he said, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock. What rock? The rock of revelation that you just received. Look what he said. What's going to happen? I will do what? Say it with me. Build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Look at what else he said. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And look at this. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus wasn't just talking to Peter, Elder Pam. He was talking to every individual that understood how powerful discernment was. So, so look at this, Minister Marina. Jesus was revealing through discernment. Look at this. Through discernment, you will be blessed. He was revealing that through discernment, you will build Jesus' church. The reason why we're not seeing the advancement, Elder Hicks, the way we should see the advancement, because there's a lack of discernment. 
One person want to go over here and another person wants to go over here and the Holy Spirit is going ahead. He told Peter and the disciples, through discernment, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. I don't know who I'm talking about today that, that it seems like the, the, the uh, gates of hell has come up against your life. As you begin to obtain and possess discernment, you need to know that the gates of hell will never be able to prevail against a citizen of the kingdom when they're able to discern what's really going on. Paul had discernment. He said, we're not ignorant, Juwan, of Satan's devices. See, some of you think it's your co-worker that's bucking up against you, and it's the plan of the enemy. Somebody say, you have to be able to see beyond what you see, or what you see will cripple you. Look at what else he said. He said, through discernment, he will give you the keys to the kingdom. You will have access to open up heaven and to close heaven. We read the story about Elijah, but we don't recognize that he had the ability to pray. And the Bible says after he prayed, it rained for three years or three and a half years. He had the ability to open up a portal in heaven and command rain. And he went back to the king. This is what I love about people that have discernment and know that they have authority. He went back to the king and he told him, he said, nothing's going to happen until I say something. Look at somebody and say, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> when you learn how, how much discernment God is pouring out until you say something. And then he told Peter and the disciples, he said, through discernment, he will give you the power to bind and to loose. Do you understand how powerful this is? That's saying when confusion is coming up against your life, when you have discernment, you will be able to bind that confusion and release clarity. Do you know what this is saying? When, when lack is trying to overtake your life and you can't see how you go pay your next bill, this, this verse is revealing. When you have discernment, you can buy lack and release the resources of heaven. You, you know what? When you read the Bible, you will begin to see this very clear because when Peter came to Jesus, Peter came to Jesus, he said, um, Minister Marina, he said, they, they want us to pay the taxes. And P Peter looked in his pocket and said, wait a minute, we, we, Jesus, they want us to pay the taxes. Somebody say, Jesus, they want us to pay the taxes. We ain't got no money. And Jesus looked at him with discernment, Deacon Ray, and he said, uh, oh, is that what they want us to do? Well, what I want you to do is uh, I've already assigned a fish. We're going to call the fish Little Leroy. Go down to Little Leroy because I've already put enough not just for me but for him when you have discernment you will always have more than enough somebody say lord i thank you for greater discernment i thank you for greater discernment <laughs> so so as we read this text what we see is that peter says six words in greek he heard in the spirit from god and it supernaturally aligned him with heaven and placed him in God's agenda. And after this happened, Jesus confirmed the word Peter spoke and told, told Peter and the other disciples how important it was to discern the Father's voice. As we mentioned on Thursday, we have to understand, although Jesus was fully God and fully man, minister unique, we have to understand that when Jesus walked in the earth ram, he lived out his life as a citizen. He lived out his life, minister down, to show us what we can do when we're able to discern. Everything that is in my life right now is a product of my discernment. Lord, what are you saying? And what happens to a lot of people, can I tell you what happens? A lot of people in the church, they start off hearing from God, but when they miss God, they stop wanting to hear from God. And we don't talk about what you do when you miss him. Therefore, they're in the middle of I used to.
to be able to hear from him. They're in the middle of the good old days and they can't get to the greater days because they missed him before. I thank God for the word of God because today we're going to teach you what to do after you miss him. So, so, <laughs> hallelujah. See, if you're not careful, you'll be connected to people that pretend like they always hear accurately. See, this is where it get good. See, see, if you're before leaders that say, I never missed him, then that's a problem. Because God always positioned leaders and you in a position to always recognize how much you need him, Elder Lightfoot. So therefore, although I might hear and be accurate more, most of the time, I have to be cautious that I don't get over in pride so that people can look at me as if I'm better than them. The Bible says, Minister Donald, that we need to learn how to esteem others greater than ourselves. So can I tell you, because I speak more than you, I miss it more than you. Y'all need to hear me today. Because I have more responsibility than you, I'm missing. Because I'm trying to figure this thing out. I'm trying to be sensitive, but God has already factored in the areas I wasn't going to get it right. So that if I continue, that I'm going to be free and experience all that he has for me. The truth is, he has called us not to be perfect, but to continue. You have to be transparent because if I'm not transparent about the areas that I missed it, then you would miss it and think something is wrong with you. You would miss it and, and think, well, I must not have the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, you go learn today. You go learn today. But, but we don't talk about it. And, and let me tell you why we don't talk about it, Elder Pam. We don't talk about it because many churches are set up like a hierarchy. They want you to see the leader as greater than yourselves. And any leader that tries to get you to see them greater than you is not a leader that have been called and that is not being led by the Spirit. The Bible says when Jesus taught his disciples, he said the greatest of you shall be your servant, not your leader. Somebody say, teach us, Lord, teach us. So, so, when you recognize, watch this, oh my God, listen to me. When you recognize, Elder Hicks, that there's room in my life for me to make mistakes, now I can step out on faith a little bit more, Jasmine. See, before, when you didn't know there was some room that God gave you, you thought you were serving a God to do this and do that, and, and God is revealing to you today, no, I'm not a do this, do that God. I'm a relational God. I, I'm going to give you room. If you don't take out the trash today, baby, I'm expecting you to get it on Monday. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for room to fail. And can I tell you something? Because Jesus said it is finished, and all victory is in him. That's the only victory I need. So, so Jesus, watch this, he confirmed that Peter heard accurately. And he was really sharing with us, anybody that is able to discern accurately, I'm going to pour out my spirit and my kingdom is going to be available for them to cooperate with my agenda. What you need to know today is that Jesus was saying to Peter, discernment releases the blessing. I hope you're taking notes today. Discernment builds the church. Discernment cuts off the attack of the enemy. A lot of people don't understand that when the Bible says that prayer is one of our weapons, it's because when you go into prayer, you go into the spirit to discern what's really going on in your life. Discernment gives you access to the kingdom of God. Inside of the kingdom of God is everything that God has for us. And he was also revealing to them and revealing to us today that discernment gives you power to bind and to lose. Now what God is revealing to us is the key to experience victory after victory 
after victory, after victory. Somebody say it with me. Discernment is the key. Somebody say it with me. Greater discernment is coming. Hallelujah. I hope you're grabbing a hold of this. Greater discernment is coming. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Watch what happens in the same chapter. Look at this. Peter discerns accurately. This is the same chapter that Peter said, thou art the Christ. Jesus started telling the disciples about how he was about to die and to be raised again. And let's see what happened. Matthew, the 16th chapter, 22nd and 23rd verse. Some of you go get free today. Jesus was telling the disciples, Elder Pam, I'm about to get up out of here. Look at what Peter said. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned, look at what the Lord said. The same chapter. Somebody say the same chapter. He turned to Peter and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Wait, 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 wait. This is the same person Jesus just said, because of your discernment, you shall be blessed. In the same chapter, he's calling him Satan? See, see, this is why when you become a leader in the church, discernment is so critical because the same person that you allowed to prophesy that day, when they get home, they can find themselves prophesying later. Oh. What do you do when people in the church are able to accurately discern at times, but at other times you know they're walking in confusion? What do you do when, when, when people in the church, they say, I know God wants me to do this, and you're in agreement because you know that is what God wants you to do, but they also say, I know that God wants me to do that, and you know that ain't nothing but the devil. Look at, look at what happened. Jesus tells him, he said, but he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou sayest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Jesus cut off immediately the ministry of Satan that tried to creep up in Jesus' ministry. He rebuked Peter, and he didn't do it alongside. He did it in the opening so that the disciples can see there are times that you can be right, Minister Donald, but there are also times that you can be wrong. So what was he telling them? Stay humble, Peter. Uh, Continue, Deacon Ray, to pursue me, Peter. He was telling them, Jasmine, don't think that because you got this right, you can't get the next step wrong. Somebody say, for the rest of my life, I'm going to recognize how much I need him. See, he was showing Peter, don't ever get to the place, Elder Hicks, where you think you got me figured out. Don't, don't ever get to the place where you just think you know Genesis from Revelations and you don't never have to read another scriptures. Don't ever ever get to the place where you are high and mighty and you think everybody need to look up to you humble yourself Peter humble yourself Peter humble yourself Peter yeah you got it right Peter in 2012 yeah you got it right Peter in 2014 but in 2020 humble yourself Peter So we have many people today, God speaks to them, leadership confirms, we believe that's God. Then all of a sudden they're outside of the church doing their own thing because they don't recognize that just because you heard once right doesn't mean that you're going to continue. God said in his word that if you're going to continue, you need to learn how to submit yourselves. One to another, look across the room and say, you need me more than you think, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know you got it right before, but you need me more than you think because I'm the person. I'm going to tell you that, yeah, you got it right, but I'm going to tell you when you get it wrong as well. And, and how many of y'all know that Jesus didn't do this to condemn him? And that's why, that's why accurate teaching is so important, Minister Lightfoot. The reason it's so important is because when you don't get accurate teaching, you will feel ashamed when you miss it, Deacon Ray. 
James, you will feel ashamed when you went after something with all your strength and with all your heart and with all your might just to find out years later that it wasn't God. Where are you going to turn now? Where are you going to go now when you've been giving your money into things, when you've been telling other people about it, when you've been shouting about it, thanking God in advance for something Elder Pam that he never told you? What do you do? And that's why I love the ministry of Jesus because he used his chief apostle to show others how much they needed one another. So, so we see here the second time what happened. Peter did not discern properly. Thank God Jesus corrected him or he would have thought he could not miss God because he was walking with him. This is powerful right here. This is powerful. Some of you are walking with him, and because you are walking with him, Minister Donald, you think you can't miss him. There are prophets out there that don't recognize that, man, when I was birthed into the kingdom, I was birthed as a prophet. Like, I see, I hear, I can flow. I have the mantle on me. But how dare I would never come to a place and say, every time I prophesy, I get it right. I prophesy by faith because I believe God has something for you to say to you. But I would never stand up and say, I never missed it. That's not my place to worry about, Jasmine, whether I miss it or make it. It's my place to do what I believe he's telling me to do. And if I get it wrong, it's my place to say, well, Minister Marina, forgive me that time. I got it wrong that time, but I guarantee next time I'm going to try to get it right. But it's your place to, the Bible says, do not despise prophesying. It's your place not to say, no, I'll pick who prophesies out of me. Ain't everybody going to, no, no, we're in a body. Give me an opportunity to exercise my gift. If you don't receive it. I'm going to exercise until I grow. And as I grow, I'm still going to be humble, exercising it until I grow. And I'm going to continue to exercise it until I get to the place that God has taken me. But what happens in the church, because people don't have accurate teaching, you prophesy the wrong thing one time and they're all gossiping about you. Oh, that's a false prophet. He was off today. He didn't get it. But they didn't, uh, they didn't recognize that there were many times they didn't get it. Many times they were off. Somebody say, teach us today, teach us. What is God trying to do, Elder, Elder, Elder Hicks? He's trying to get us to recognize why he established the church. See, because we don't know why he established the church, we tend to see people on Facebook that says, oh, oh, me and God got our own relationship. And because of this teaching, you can know where their relationship is right now with God. Right? You can know that, that they thought that they, they got it right the first time. And, and they thought from that time on, they keep getting it right. But like I told you before, the Holy Spirit will never lead you outside of the word. He will never tell you never connect or link up with the local ministry. He will never tell you not to walk in love with the individual because of what they did. He will never tell you to spew division into the body. Somebody say amen to that. So let me keep going real quickly. So if you are unwilling, watch this, to be corrected, your ability to see and hear from God will be limited. Somebody say thank God for correction. This is very important. And now, you know, this would be cool if I could just preach and I could just say to, say to you, uh, James, uh, man, I'm so glad that, I, you know, I'm an elder at Greater Works. I get to correct you. But somebody say, this applies to everybody. Y'all don't know, but I, I get corrected at home by my wife more than all of y'all. I'm messing with her. I love her. She do correct me when she wants to. And then this is what she say, y'all women are something else. We have all kind of authority in the church. We done cast out devils. We done, we done did all this. And then they get home. I want to talk to the husband side of you. I want to talk to <laughs> Deacon Ray. I don't want to talk to my pastor. I want to talk to my husband. I'm talking to you, uh, Minister Stephen, as, as my husband. I, I don't know what that means. Like, I guess she's saying, well, excuse all the titles and the authority and the callings. And <laughs> let me correct you now. Sit down on my pedal. I have to tell her politely, I got to go for a drive. <laughs> but she's with, she used that wisdom on me, and I, I give it to her, and I listen, you know. Because I know that when I selected her, I selected her through discernment. 
I was 10,000 miles away, and I, you know, I got, how many of y'all know what a faith moment is? Right, a faith moment. When somebody is speaking about something, about a business, about a partner, or just somebody's ministering, and in that moment, something leaps in you. That's a faith moment. So, 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 so my faith moment, I was 10,000 miles away, and I share this story, but I love it so much because it, it just blessed me, and I want some of you men that are looking to get this discernment, to get this faith moment. And so the guy was talking about, I, I remember his name, Pastor Kwanzaa. He was talking about how God showed him his wife, Elder Hicks, and he said, he said uh, his wife was actually his pastor's daughter, and he was dreaming. And he was like, you know, down in Africa, they do this thing. They say, ah, you know, it's like, you know, that's a show of excitement. They, ah, you know. And so he was like, ah, I was in my dream. And, 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 and man, she was in my house and she had uh, uh, coffee. She was bringing me coffee. And in that moment, I knew that was my wife. And, 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 the, and the funny thing about his story is that when he came up out of the dream the next day, he found her and told her the dream and said, hey, I know that you're my wife. And guess what happened? She didn't speak to him, Minister Marina, for a whole year. He got the dream, but he lacked a little bit of deserve. He didn't know when, Jasmine. He didn't know where. He didn't know how. And so <laughs> then he said a year later, we connected, and we fell in love, and we got married, and they were having a baby while I was down there. It was just so adorable. So I heard this story being a single man looking for my, uh, my better half, and, and, and I had Elder Life for the faith moment. And right in that moment, I promise you, and I'm going to show you how real this was. I said, God, right in that moment, under my breath, I said, Lord, who is my wife? I said, wait a minute. If you're able to give him a dream, you're no respect to a person. Help my discernment. Who is bone of my flesh? And and I, I promise you, 10,000 miles away from her, her picture came up right there before my eyes. I saw her picture right there before my eyes. And I told them, I said, man, y'all are not going to believe it. God just showed me my wife. Now, I was happy and a little sad because I went out with Krista before and she was hard. <laughs> she made up her mind about a 6'2 brother and I was 5'6". Somebody say, I was in trouble. And then when she met me, she got saved, Jasmine. And then, you know, she was not just shot. <laughs> if your pastor don't make you laugh, you got permission to lead a judge. No, I'm just joking. But so, so I share that story after about, now it took him a year. It took me about three years of chasing Kristen. And, and, and let me tell y'all, some of my friends, look, I told them, my mother, I, I told my mother I would have got the ring. My mother was like, are you sure? Because <laughs> ah, she didn't want her baby get hurt. So, James, she was like, wait a minute, you know. She was like, well, that ring might convince her, but, you know, are you sure? <laughs> but, 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 but let me tell y'all. Now, now, this is going to help some of y'all. After God, see, 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 when God really begins to work in your life and show you things, guess what you do? You start talking. So I begin to tell some of my friends, oh, man, I, I already know who my wife is. I already know. And I begin to tell her, yes, yeah, this young lady over here, we weren't dating, we weren't talking. I just begin to tell them. And some of my friends, because it took me a little longer, I don't even know if I told Chris, they would say, man, leave that girl alone, all these other girls. Come on, y'all need to hear me. Some of y'all about to get help today. Juwan, they, they say, man, you still talking about her? They looking at their clock. It's two years, six months. You ain't even going with her yet. But somebody say, I had discernment. Somebody say, discernment will give you endurance. Look across the room and say, don't let nobody talk you out. What God has allowed you to discern. Continue to go after. Hey, 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 hey. What God has called you to be able to hear and see for yourself. All right, I'm, I'm going to stop there for Kristen. Should I get in trouble later? I might go too far. Y'all understand where I was going? Jawah was like, I got that. I got that. Now, look, what would have happened 
If Peter refused to be connected to the body, if he would have heard what God said, and he would have went about his way, what would have happened if Peter was convinced by a voice God wanted him to do something different? What would have happened if Peter stopped listening? Listen to me. When you are submitted one to another, you are agreeing that I am willing to be corrected in order, somebody say, to remain inside of God's agenda. Now that I'm talking about this, some of you got Facebook friends and you know exactly what went wrong. You know that there was one day they were able to hear accurately and then the next day something went off. But they didn't allow leadership into their life. One of the things, you know, as I was writing this, it's very amazing. And, and my wife, um, I believe, yeah, 2016, we were married by then. When I, when I began to write this book, God's Agenda, it was so much of what God has said. And I was just like, I wanted to make sure that it was accurate. Can somebody say amen? I wanted to make sure that, you know, even though I know my desire is to hear from him and that I hear from him, and I know that my desire is to pour into his people, I didn't want to release a prophetic book without anybody being able to say yes or no. Is anybody, see, some people, you, you, you feel, oh, man, God told me to do it. I'm going to run. I'm going to do it. Oh, oh, God said it. God said it. God said it. But you have to understand, you're not in the season to just pick up and do without being aligned and without allowing others to say, yeah, that's it. Because whether you like it or not, Minister Juwan, whether you like it or not, Deacon Juwan, whether you like it or not, what God says to you is always connected to his body. Everything. We're many members of what, Elder Pam? One body. So, so watch this. When I began to write it, guess what I did? I was up under Bishop H.L. Butts. Now, now watch this. This is where it gets kind of intense. I knew that Bishop Butts had a mantle of a pastor, but I knew he didn't have a mantle of a prophet. Y'all need to hear me. Because some people excuse, I got a mantle of a prophet, uh, Jasmine, so my pastor, I can't take none before him because I hear and see more than him, Paul, uh, Solomon, and all of them. Can somebody say amen? That's how people act today. But, but even though I knew he had a mantle of a pastor and a bishop on his life, I still presented this and laid it on his book and said, Man of God, if you believe that this is what God is saying, then I'm going to release it. But if you believe that this is not what God is saying, then I'm not going to release it. Something that I took out time to write, something that I took out time to try to interpret. I said, man of God, if it doesn't align with your spirit, if it doesn't bear with, what was I doing? I was willing to be submitted and transparent because I really believed it was God. Look at somebody say, stop hiding your visions. Ah. Oh, stop hiding uh, your notebook saying this is for me and God alone. Stop, stop hiding it. God is trying to take you higher. Can I, can I tell y'all something too as we go along with this? And, and I'm going to close and I'll just pick up next time real soon. But, but, but what I want to share with you is that it doesn't matter what the devil knows about what God is revealing to you. It, the devil can know every prophetic word, Elder Hicks, that God ever gave you. Jesus told them, when you have discernment, when you're able to hear from me, the gates of hell will not be able to prevail. Proverbs eleven fourteen. let's look at this. Are y'all learning something today? What time is it right now? What time do we got? Proverbs eleven fourteen. look at what it says. Minister Marina, where no counsel is. The people what? But in the multitude of what? Of counselors, there is safety. This scripture is encouraging us to come together. Encouraging us to say, hold on. You, you know, I, I want to make this move, but does it make sense? I'm not just asking for your advice, but can you pray with me on this so that we can get what God is really saying on it? Look at this. Hebrews 1025, and this is a very familiar one, but it says, not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting 
one another as such the more as ye see the day approach. Meaning that Jesus is coming back soon. Now more than ever we need to be accurate and discern properly. Look at this, Ephesians 5, 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in what? In the fear of God. So one of the most difficult things for a leader to do in the church is to discern for others. I'm going to close with this story. Solomon. He was about to be raised up as king. David just pronounced he was king. The Bible says God visited Solomon in his dreams. I'm going to stop there. Some of you, God has been visiting you in your dreams, and you have been counted it off as if somebody else or something else or a piece of dream. God visited Solomon in his dream, and look at what he asked Solomon, mother. He says, Solomon, what is it that you want? I believe we're entering in the season where God is going to begin to ask us, what is it that you want, Elder Pam? But you got to be in alignment. Solomon was in alignment. He said, what is it that you want? And look at what Solomon asked for. Out of all the things he could have asked for, Minister Donald, he said, you have put me before a great people. And basically what he said is, please give me discernment. Help me to be able to show them the right way to go. Help me to be able to distinguish between good and bad. Your voice, the voice of the enemy, my voice. Help me to be able to receive wise counsel. And what Solomon asked the Lord was so precious to him. He said to him, listen to me, because you have asked me this, now I will withhold nothing from you. He said, Solomon, you didn't ask me for your enemy's head. You didn't ask me for long life. You didn't ask me for scholarships for your children. You asked me for discernment. And because you have asked me for a discerning heart, Solomon, I'm opening up the windows of the heaven. And I'm pouring you out a blessing. Is there anybody in the house of God that will lift their hands and say, Father, I'm asking you for discernment. Lord, give me a discerning heart because you are the people that God is saying. If you get discernment, there is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing that I will withhold from them that are upright before me, from them that are able to discern good from evil, my voice from the enemies. I am pouring pouring out my spirit in this season on individuals that can desire. Come on, let's lift our hands in this atmosphere. Stand to your feet all over this place. Just begin to ask the Lord. Lord, give me an understanding heart. Give me discernment so my next relationship will be my last relationship. Give me discernment for my next job, my next career path would be the career path that you have. Give me discernment in my business. Give me discernment in my school. Give me discernment with my children. Give me discernment in my marriage so I won't make the same mistakes as my parents made. Give me discernment. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word today. Such a critical word for such a time as this. I pray that your people have ears to hear. What thus saith the Lord in this season. I pray that this word would be a turning point in their lives. That they would recognize more than they need anything else. They need discernment. And we thank you for your prophetic word you gave me three years ago that is coming to pass now. You said that greater discernment is coming. A greater awareness of your spirit is coming. Father, let it be poured out upon your people today. Let the awakening start today. Let glory be released. Somebody say today. Let prosperity come. Somebody say today. Let freedom come when? Today. Let miracles happen when? Let glory fall when? Let miracles happen when? Somebody shout in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, it is so. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I hate for those that missed, I'm telling you. I am How many of y'all learned something today? My God. You know when God began to show you things like this, 
you begin to appreciate coming to the house of the Lord. Right? You begin to appreciate to be amongst your brothers and sisters because you recognize that even if I fall or even if I miss it, God is able to restore me. It doesn't mean that my calling has been taken away from me. One of the things that I was going to show you, and I'll show you Thursday, but I was going to talk about what do you do when you miss it. And a lot of people don't know that the Bible encourages us, listen to me, to practice our gifts. The Bible encourages us, Elder Hicks, to practice being able to hear from him. To practice prophesying. To practice going up to somebody. I believe that, 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 that God is showing me this vision is about a business. Do you see that? To other believers that are filled. For leadership, the pastor. God, pastor, God, God gave me a dream, and I believe this way I should go. Because what would have happened if you're not sharing anything with anybody else, you would interpret even what God has given you accurately, wrongly, and find yourself still in the wrong place. The Bible says in Hebrews that we need to exercise our gift until we come into the full maturity of our gift. Right now, there might be somebody that's watching that has never been filled with the Holy Spirit. My discernment kicked in times 10 when I got filled with the Holy Spirit. There was a great awakening in my spirit. If you never experienced being filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, it will change your DNA. We call it being baptized in the Spirit. If that's you, I want to encourage you to ask the Lord today, ask Him this week to fill you with the Spirit. If you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus, today is your day. Make a decision. I want to know you. I want to be in your presence. You might be watching right now and, and you don't have the same fire you had when you first became a believer. Ask God to rededicate your heart today. Rededicate. Say, Lord, I want that same passion, that same fire. Every head bow. If that's you today, just repeat after me. Say, Father in heaven, I'm coming to you today to give you my life. I ask you to forgive me for every area of my life that I've fallen short of your glory. I turn away from sin today, and I turn to you. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit, that I might be all that you have called me to be. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. And because of the finishing work of Jesus, I confess, I am saved. I am healed. I am free. I am born again. In Jesus' name. I want you to know if you prayed that simple prayer, the Lord Jesus has come into your heart. Now it's up to you to continue to pursue him so that you can have discernment and for you to grow, for you to go where he's taking you for such a season and such a time as this. Let's give the Lord a round of applause as they sing that. Come on, let's just worship. Go ahead, sing that, Elder Kristen. I don't want it. I don't need it. Come on, somebody tell them to take everything. I just want you. 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 We just want you. We just want you. Hallelujah. I just want you. We just want you. I just want you. We just want you. I just want you. Last time, let's sing it together. Take everything. Take everything. I don't want it. I don't need it. God, take everything. I don't I want you to go on my back, grab some books. As we give, 
If you give over that and you don't have this book, I want to sign it out to you today. I want to be a blessing to you today. Amen. And I want you to start reading it this week. It will bless your life. It will really bless your life. At this time, we're going to get you, give you the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. Amen. Elder Pam, you glad to be back in the house of the God? I'm glad to see you. Good to see my God, Deacon Ray. Man, we're about to be giving out. He's giving out food almost every day. I'm looking forward to our next opportunity. Saturday, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. How many of y'all love what God is doing in this season? Amen. Uh, Elder Krista, can I get my, uh, I want to sow into this. Amen. Pray for me. Yeah, thank you. You can actually set them up here, actually. You can set them right here on this counter. See how many of them stand. If they fall, then you had the right discernment. <laughs> Double them up. Look at that. Triple them up. Ah. Ah, he had the right discernment. Look at him fall. Come on, let's see what he do next. See what he do next. Okay, he did good. <laughs> Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's get our offerings. As we get our offerings together, this is one of the things Elder Krista corrects me on. How, how do you want us to go today, baby? How do you want us? How do you want us to give today? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Didn't y'all enjoy that worship today? Man. That worship was on point. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet all over this place. Is it okay for them to walk? It's okay for you to walk, but just don't touch the uh, receptacle. Just pour it in. Let's raise our offering to the King of Kings. Come on, raise your offering. If you're watching online, raise your smartphone and confess with me. Say, Father, I thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom. I decree, I declare, increase is coming into my life. It's coming into my business. I proclaim nothing missing, nothing blessed, broken. Overflow is mine and my family's. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. It is so. Amen. Thank God for Dennis working in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The ushers will lead you out. I'll give it to you right after. Yep. It's my season for the favor of the Lord. Servants thirsty for an outpour. I am standing on the promises of God. Everything He has for me, I receive. I receive to be a blessing. I have a promise. Woo! A promise from heaven. Oh Lord, it's my season. It's my time. For the favor of the Lord, I have a promise, a promise from heaven. It's my season, it's my time for the favor of the Lord. Amen. Who all I'm giving books to this morning? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah, okay, sounds good. Who else I got? I got Jasmine in the back. You already got one you need? Yeah, okay. Ah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You want to? Okay. Press down, shaking together. Hi, is, somebody, is somebody believing God for some kind of financial God increase this week, down, this upcoming week? Who are you? Believe in God, but just raise your hands. In the face Who's releasing? <laughs> Deacon Ray understands. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Deacon Ray understands what childlike faith Look at. I thought it was one of my sons. He was like, yeah, that's me. I, just raise your hand. I feel a release in the house. 
In the name of Jesus. Father, right now, by the Spirit of the living God, I command resources that have been held up, I command them to be released. In the name, everything that is holding up anyone's resources under the sound of my voice, I command you to loose your hold now. In the name of Jesus, I command a hundredfold. I command window, a window, a window of glory to come upon their household, to come upon their family. Increase explosive wealth. Come upon them now in Jesus' name. Let testimony after testimony after testimony come upon them and their families. If you receive it, say in Jesus', Jesus name. name. It is so. Amen. Elder Christie, you may go ahead. Amen. You wanted another one. Okay. Amen. Amen. Praise God for what he's doing. You can go ahead and keep playing that. Press down, shaking together and running over. He's going to do something for us this week. I don't yeah. know about you. I was with you. I was with you. When you lift up your hands, I said, that's for me. I know I'm the pastor's wife, but I receive it for me too. Amen. <laughs> so if you ain't going to get the blessing, I'll take your blessing too. <laughs> Amen. Really quick, some announcements for this week. You want to make sure that you, of course, are on the prayer call. What an awesome prayer call this week. We had all of our ministers and elders. Amen. We were flooding in line. That's it right there. So make sure you're on the prayer call this week. Make sure that you get the number and dial in Monday through Friday to be on the prayer call because prayer does change things. Please make sure that, of course, you be back here on Thursday. Somebody say Thursday. Thursday prayer at 6.30 and then of course 7 o'clock. Make sure you're here for Transformation Bible Study uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. We do fast. Amen. We do fast every Wednesday night from 12 midnight to 3 p.m. the next day on Thursday. So make sure you are part of our corporate fast as well too. And of course our Supernatural Sunday service as well. Each Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, some of you were able to join in with our first service at 10 a.m. for our e-members and those who are online. 10 a.m. is our first service followed by our second service for Supernatural Natural Sunday at 11 a.m. So make sure, of course, you join in and tune in and always start a watch party and share with others as well, too. If you are, of course, a visitor, you're watching online, you can be an e-member uh, or, of course, you can join us on site to be a part of Greater Works Ministry where we are advancing the kingdom with a vision and mission with our pastor, Eric Lee Brown. So please make sure you go to, go to greaterworksdetroit.com to see how you can be a part of our church here. And we are doing a lot of different things uh, here at the ministry. One of the things we do want to announce of course is this Saturday if I say this Saturday this Saturday at 11 a.m., 11 to 12, 30 p.m., is our food drive. So please make sure if you are a volunteer, those who are participating, to please be here at 10.30 a.m. Uh, for us to set up and to pray prior to. But 11 a.m. Uh, to 12.30, we will have our food drive. Thank you to Deacon Ray and uh, those who are heading up our uh, evangelism team and ministry outreach for that. So please make sure you're here uh, to be a part of that. And all of our July birthdays. Make some noise for our July birthdays. Amen. Those who are watching online, we have Justine, Mr. King, Andre King, the Lightfoots, I believe, this month as well, too. Amen. Minister Lightfoot and Minister Gerana, if you're watching, happy birthday to uh, Gerana McAllister and all of the July birthdays. If you're in the house, we want to celebrate you. So happy birthday again for you as well, too. As we stand to our feet in the house, amen, we want you to make sure that you stay connected. Please make sure that you take the book and make sure um, if you're enjoying what you're hearing, share it with some else make sure you're witnessing for those who are in the house we have our new postcards so please make sure as our pastor has encouraged us to go out and tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus take that postcard uh, put them in the, in the hair salons they're open now hair salons wherever you may go whoever you're talking to encourage them to get online to hear this word and to make sure that they partake in all the things we're doing here at greater works amen so stay connected as you lift up your hands Lord we thank you father for being here with us on today we ask oh God that you protect us, Lord God, and keep us and cover us, Lord God. Uh, we thank you, Father, for your angels of protection and wherever we may go, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for the word on today, for discernment, Lord God. So we ask, Lord God, that you would help us to not just be a hearer, but to be also a doer of your word. And we thank you, Father. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue to bless our pastor pressed down, shaking together, and running over with more anointing, more discernment as he leads our people, oh God. And as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we thank you for bringing us back together again safely, and we call it done. Somebody say, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. If you're praise team, make sure you come up immediately right after as well too.